Hey, welcome back. This is Dr. Kavita Sun, and we are in video two of our six part series. So, when I work with couples, um, either privately or in our program, there are certain stages that I take them through and certain skills that I teach them to be able to get out of the power struggle and to create a mature, interdependent, juicy, playful, passion-filled relationship that has the hallmarks and has the strength and the resilience to be able to last a lifetime, okay? So I wanna teach you or sort of give you a visual for the five stages that I take couples through so you have an idea of what those stages are and then we'll talk about each stage and I'll give you some um, skills that you can immediately start using in your relationship, depending on which stage that you need you need to um, improve. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I am hoping you all can see my screen right now, and I'm going to open a visual that helps you see the the framework that I've created. So as you can tell, there is, you know, a, a, the, there's a vague background to this image of a house. I hope you can see it. So here's my question for you as you're looking at this, okay? If you and your spouse were to go out into the world right now, into the real world right now, and you decided to build a house, okay? And you wanted this house, like your marriage, to last a lifetime. What do you think is the most important structure in that house if you want it to last a lifetime? The foundation, right? Exactly. That's the same in marriages too. If you don't have a rock solid foundation, you're not gonna get any benefit from spending, you know, all of your lifetime, years and years or thousands of dollars making the rooms beautiful or getting pretty furniture, right? If your foundation is rocky, no amount of work on the rest of the house is going to save the house. It's going to sink, right? It's the same in marriages, okay? So part of what I do is actually assess where your foundation is and then come up with a um, sort of custom built strategy for you and your spouse to actually strengthen your foundation, okay? So if you look at the foundation in this picture, you'll notice that it's made up of two parts, right? The first part is what I call U 2.0. By the way, this whole new marriage that you're gonna be building that has the best of your current marriage, but also gets you to a point where you're in a blissful, interdependent, mature love, that marriage I call marriage 2.0 because you're updating all of the sort of somewhat faulty um, software that we were given to survive our childhood. We all got some faulty software and now it's time to upgrade that so we can create the marriage of our dreams. So that marriage is marriage 2.0. But to get to marriage 2.0, the foundation is you 2.0. Okay, this is where I will help you. I help my clients actually unpack their hidden agenda, figure out what the different parts of that are, where it came from, and how to heal it. Okay, it sounds more complicated than it is. It's actually a simple but powerful process. And you can do that within two weeks, really. It's, it's pretty amazing the transformation that happens when we can see what's in our blind spot and heal ourselves. So that's U 2.0. The other second part of a foundation is peacefulness. Now, I don't mean peacefulness as in, oh, we kind of don't fight, but we just don't say much to each other. We just kind of, you know, avoid each other. That's not real peacefulness. That's walking on eggshells, right? So real peacefulness is when both of you feel that your home is a calm, safe sanctuary, 
It's a place that you can lean on and rest in and be yourself in and feel fully seen and loved in. That is a peacefulness that needs to be a foundation of this house that you're building. Because if you don't feel safe in your own home, if your home is not a sanctuary for both of you, nothing else will work. Okay, so that's what I um, help my clients do is actually strengthen the foundation. Once we're there and we've created a rock solid foundation, the next step is deep connection and trust. So remember when you fell in love with your spouse, you didn't know so much about your spouse. You didn't know all the details. You know a lot more about your spouse now than you did then, right? But you had a sense of feeling safe and trustworthy and this sense that you were deeply connected. That is what allows us to play, to relax, to communicate in ways that doesn't hurt the other person. The problem is the connection that we develop, even though it's lovely in the honeymoon phase, is superficial. Because you don't know all your partner's flaws. So of course it's easy to feel that kind of connection. What I'm talking about here is deep connection. It's not the superficial, this person is perfect connection. It's the deeper connection and trust that comes with knowing and fully seeing one another. And I help my clients actually unpack what that would look like in their particular relationship. So without connection and trust, you cannot actually improve your communication. See, this is what a lot of um, couples counseling gets wrong because they jump into communication, right? But the thing is, you will just become polite, distant adversaries if you're not first your best self, if you haven't created your 2.0 and healed yourself and create a genuine safe sanctuary and deep connection and trust, if you don't have that and you just jump into working on communication, you're just going to be kind of distant, polite, rule following people that feel kind of blah. The whole marriage feels kind of like bland, right? And that's not sustainable long term. So, only after we heal your hidden agenda, create true peace and deep connection and trust, then I will teach you or I teach my clients some communication skills that are like the cherry on top, right? If we jump to communication, it's like the tip of the iceberg. All icebergs, 90% of them are below the waterline. So we have to go from ground up and then get to the communication, which is the tip of the iceberg. The next phase that I um, walk my clients through is how to renew and rejuvenate true passion. And I don't mean just sex. I mean intimacy, sizzling intimacy in and out of the bedroom. And there are different ways that men and women often approach this intimacy different ways that they need it, different ways that they give it, different ways that they receive it. And it's not often a gendered thing, right? Sometimes um, women have, may do some of the things that classically we associate with men. So it's less about whether you're a man or a woman and more about what it is that you tend to do and where you tend to fall and your spouse and what's happening there. And we'll get into that. Um, I'll give you some tips and tricks um, for that in our video on, on developing passion. The final part that I lead my clients through is what I call protection. It's like the roof of your house. What does the roof of your house do? Your physical house, right? It protects you from the elements. It protects you from snowstorms and um, you know, tornadoes and trees falling on you, right? It's supposed to protect you from the outside world. Now, this is the same thing in a relationship. In marriage 2.0, your roof will protect you from life's up and down. Life is full of wonderful things and horrible things happening to us, right? And if you don't have a strong roof, 
you'll do fine until some stress comes along. And whenever stress comes along, you'll fall back into your old ways. That's why people end up going back to therapy every couple of years. You're always looking for a fix because you haven't built it from the ground up and you don't have a roof of protection. So I teach my clients how to self-diagnose what's happening, recognize it, know where the disconnection is, is happening in their unique marriage and fix it before it becomes an issue. Because all marriage is a dance between disconnection and connection. Couples that get stuck in power struggle, they just get disconnected and then they keep worsening the disconnection because of the toxic um, patterns that they get into. So that's the final part is the protection so that you can maintain this lasting love, this marriage 2.0 for the rest of your life. Okay, so let me close this down so that we can come back here. Okay, so that's the overall framework that I've created to help couples go from a rocky foundation and a house that feels like shaky and unsafe to creating a marriage that feels um, safe, calm, connected, juicy, playful, passionate, and they have the tools to be able to maintain that for life. So in the next videos, I'm actually going to go into each level and give you a few um, tips in each level that you can start using right away. Okay. Now, one last thing I want to finish on is oftentimes people come to me and they say, oh my gosh, I chose the wrong person. We're so incompatible. You know, I'm a spender. I like to enjoy fine things in life. And he's a saver or he's a miser, right? Um, or I am an extrovert. I enjoy meeting people and she never wants to leave the house. Or, um, you know, I am easygoing and loving and I believe in attachment parenting and my spouse is harsh and strict with the kids. We, we just, we're just not compatible. I want to challenge that here by telling you, remember the hidden agenda that you bought into the relationship and so does your spouse? We choose our spouses for a reason, okay? And the reason is, there is in your spouse the things that you need to be able to heal your own agenda, hidden agenda, your own raw spots. That's why they're so different from you. They should be. Okay, I often joke and say, if I'd married myself, I wouldn't have lasted even 48 hours, right? Your spouse should be different than you, and that's a strength. And we choose our spouses so that what we don't have, they have, because there's something in that that we need to be able to heal our own raw spots and bring forth and become whole from our past. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through the different stages. And I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Bye.